Broken, better, bruised. I just don't know how I'ma make it through this day. Car broke down and I ain't got no way. The work in the boss man say I can't be late. But he had a form in his flesh. He said he asked God to take it away three times. But the Lord said, No, I'm gonna leave it right back. This bill's piling up. If I was to say it, I'd be like, What the? Probably grab me a cup and pour up. But I read away for God to show up. Ain't too much long been say this uphill battle trying to fight my old ways. But I know it's a test of measurement to see if my heart really changed. The pain can be too much at times, but still I follow God's design because it's Him I trust in all things. So it doesn't matter what life brings.
coming out of the blood of the Holy Father. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, they wanted a deliverer. 
then God sent them Moses. Moses came from floating in the Egyptian, uh, uh, floating in the river. After floating in the river, he came to deliver them from the house of Pharaoh. God sent ten plagues to Egypt. And on that tenth plague, that he, every firstborn male child should be killed. But Moses said, if you just take some blood and put it on the doorpost, at midnight when the death angel ride over, he'll pass over your house if it has the blood on the post and the lintels. So at midnight, he flew over, and if there was no blood mark, the death had occurred. And when this happened, everybody was affected except the children of Israel. And then Pharaoh decided it's time to let Israel go. They are now on their way to the promised land. And now God leads them out of Egypt to the promised land. And on that journey, they started to mumble. They sandals didn't wear out. Their garments didn't wear out. And when they were fed with, with bread and manna, they complained that they wanted some meat. Then God sent them quail. He sent them so much quail that it was just everywhere. And then uh, water came from a rock, but they complained about all of this. And now God still protected them. God still had his hand upon them until they got to the promised land. Now Moses is dead. He has raised up another leader named Joshua. And he said, Joshua, just like I was with Moses, I want to be with you. When the feet of the priest started walking towards Jordan and it hit the water, just like the Red Sea, it parted and they walked across on dry ground. Now that is now a generation that Joshua is leading who does not know Moses, nor the God of Moses. <laughs> this is the generation who's headed to the promised land with no Egypt experience. Yes. All right, all right. I'm going somewhere. When they were in Egypt, they knew God. They complained, but they knew it. Now Joshua has a generation that all of the old folk have died out. Now it's a new generation that don't know anything about Moses, and they don't know anything about being enslaved. All right. Don't you know that if we ought to help somebody in this day and this time that some of us got some spiritual amnesia? Let me preach it like I We know what the Lord has done for us, but we act just like we don't forget. But we don't know the God of Israel. See, see, how you know, preacher? Because we used to go to church. And folk did not just come just to say they came. They came because they knew God would make a way somehow. Not only did they go to church, people used to praise God. What we do now, we pray. This, this ain't no praise how the whole church would praise the Lord. Sometimes people would have to care for God and still as a boy because they had been overtaken with the Spirit of God. But now we act like that God Promised land, and 
there are some things we got to do, St. Paul, for us to do before we move deeper into 2020. Five days. Dick January 5th, right? Five days is not enough for us to gauge how faithful we've been to God. Let me say that again. I know we made New Year's resolutions on this, but now day five is not enough time just to say, Lord, I'm getting so faithful. Come back and holler at you for in April when something really has shaken your core. Now can you still say that God has been a faithful God? And if we can't do this like a New Year's resolution, we just can't say that God is faithful now and, and five more days later, later we leave it. But if we're going to go deep in 2020, that's some groundwork, that's some preparation we got to make. Number one, we got to take some steps of consecration. Watch this. The first command the Lord gave, gave to Israel is that, that all men are supposed to be circumcised. Circumcision was a physical sign used to identify the male descendants of Abraham. And you all know what circumcision is, don't you? Circumcision, a baby. The, the doctors would take the sharp instrument and cut off the foreskin of the male organ. That is circumcision. And everybody that was 40 years and over died in the wilderness because God said they would not see the promised land. So now we have a group of people that's wandering that now have not been circumcised. So what God told Joshua to do to make a flint knife back when in this day and time they used scalpels, very sharp, make very clean cuts. But a flint knife was a piece of stone that was just beat by a rock and it still had some jagged edges. So they took that jagged edge piece of material, cut off the foreskin of the people, and then they were circumcised. Let me say that again. 
How are we going to circumcise now? You circumcise your heart. So number one, if it don't help by God, if it does not help you grow, or if it does not come to the place that it edifies the church, we got to cut it off. If it's friends, and you want to go deep in 2020, they don't edify the church, don't, don't glorify God, and don't make it and help you grow, they got to go. I knew that was going to be hard. Some family members, if they don't edify God, if they don't help you grow, they don't edify the church, if you want to move forward in 2020, something's got to go. And we will not make it in this year with last year's mentality. We can't expect to get the full glory of God and we know that 19 was jacked up because of what we did. Do you think 20 is going to be in the with the same mentality? Something's got to go. Look at your name. I don't know what it is. But something's got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that don't glorify God in your life. We may have to detox from some folks. Y'all didn't y'all take a detox before they did a kingdom system out. You got to be able to clean yourself out because you're going to realize the things that the pastor is toxic. And if we're going deeper in 2020, some things got to be detoxed out of our body. Saints of God, stop allowing people to make you feel bad when God bless you. Don't apologize for how God has made a way in your life, how God is glorifying you and how God is blessing you. I just be obedient to God's word. And I learned once you be obedient to his holy word, and obedience is better than sacrifice. I reap the benefits of being obedient.
to be removed. He removes some stuff out of your life. Colossians 27 said we have been circumcised in the heart. And whom you have been circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands and putting off the body of the sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. The reason why we can't move, we ain't been circumcised. I know this ain't no, <laughs> no good, make you feel good, New Year's message. But if we're really trying to go with God, trying to take us, we got to be concentrated so we will be able to make it in the place where God put us. And we can't allow old stuff to be attached to us, what we're supposed to cut away, thinking it's going to be able to help us make it in the new year. If you're still having the same problems in May out of people you are having now, before you get upset, think of ask yourself one question, did I cut them off? It ain't their fault. It's your fault. God is trying to bless you. God is trying to move you. God is trying to elevate us. God is trying to put us in a new place, a new position, and, and give us a new mind, give us a new spirit, trying to um, give us a new heart. But we won't circumcise, we won't concentrate ourselves in order to make it to be what God wants us to be. We got to be consecrated. We got to be able to cut stuff off that God told us to cut off because it's not giving us any help. Look at your neighbor and say, Amen. Have you cut anything off? Mm -hmm. I have. I started January the 1, 2020 at 12.02 a.m. Everything that ain't helping me grow, gotta go. Everything that ain't helping me see God, gotta get out of the way. Everything that ain't helping me be strong in Christ, I can't deal with it. Now, I'm not going to just throw you away. Now, I'm going to still talk to you how God, good God is, but I'm not going to jeopardize what God wants me to be, trying to make folks happy who really don't even like me. Put us in a 
possession that's painful. We don't want to be in it. And we look for everything else to get us out of it and get mad when it doesn't. But if God inflicted the pain, God has to be the one to make you whole. And if God is going to use us, we got to go through some pain. If you want to go deeper in God, if you want to have a more of a proud life, pain is in your future. That's why this prosperity gospel doesn't work. It tells you to name it and claim it. If you go
is. And after he has identified who really he is, now he's getting ready to confirm. Do you have the faith after you go through some pain to be able to fight on to see what the end's going to be? I'll finish this sermon next week. I still got to talk about contemplation and celebration. St. Paul, we get ready. We been to move. Make sure you've been concentrating. Because you can't drive in the 20 but still is attached to you in 19. God told me to tell you that if you want to realize how good he really is, become identifiable that you are his child. And the way you do that, all of that stuff, you got to cut it off. Bad too, you got to cut it off. Hate a ration, you got to cut it off. I can't be mad at Donna because Donna can go back there and kill a float. With two pieces of wood and five nails. I can't get mad at him on that. I can't get mad at Tommy because he can play the organ and the keyboard. But that's what's still attached to us. All that type stuff. And then you want to know, love, but you got for the preacher in 20, but I need to see what you see. For to get right, that's what I see. Some of this stuff. I can hear the chains fall. But the Lord had to consecrate us. He had to start getting rid of some stuff. He had to start revealing spirits for who they really were. And after all of that is happening, now we're going to have some faith that God, I know that I'm broken. I know that I'm in pain, but I'm still going to fight. Because you're the one that calls the pain. To heal us all over again. Everybody stand. If there's anybody in the building who's ready to cut off everything else that wasn't 22, it might not have been 19, it might have been 1986. You still got it on. And you are ready to cut it off. You can come. When they didn't let you sing in the Christmas program back in your old church 60 years ago, and you still mad. And you're ready to cut it all when you can come home. Come out with us at 9 o'clock for Sunday school and 10 30 for our morning worship experience. Come and grow with us. Come flow with us. Come, let's give God all the glory. And